and kitten. Once upon a time, there were three little kittens, and their names were Mittens, Tom Kitten, and Moppet. They had dear little fur coats of their own, and they tumbled about the doorstep and played in the dust. But one day, their mother, Mrs. Tabitha Twitchit, expected friends to tea. So she fetched the kittens indoors to wash and dress them before the fine company arrived. Hold still, Muppet. Well, it will go in your eyes if you squirm so. Dry your ears now. Properly, mind. Stay just where you are, you two. I haven't nearly finished with you yet. Suffice. Fresh pinafores for you. Oh, there you are, Tom. Don't they look lovely? Hmm? Now then, Tom. Goodness me, I'd not realised quite how you've grown. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, uh, breathe in a little, Tom. Oh, oh <laughs> no, look. Right. We'll just have to make the best of it. I can't breathe even. Oh, don't be silly, Tom. Now keep your frocks clean, children. Yes, Mother. You must walk on your hind legs. Keep away from the dirty ash pit. Yes, Mother. And from Sally Hennypenny. Yes, Mother. And from the pigsty. Oh, and the puddle ducks. <gasps> yes, Mother. Climb up in the rockery and sit in the garden wall. And if we turn our pinafores round, ooh. Oh, never mind. We can fetch it later. Where's Tom? He's still down there. Look, come along, Tom. Hurry yourself up. Tom Kitten, what would your poor mother say to the sight of you? That's if she recognized you at all, <laughs> which I doubt. Rather fetching, don't you agree? <laughs> come, Mr. Jake Puddle Duck, come help us to dress him. Mop it. Come and button up, Tom. Mm. 
It's a very fine morning. <laughs> Come along, we can watch them from the top of the wall. <gasps> Just look at you. Look at you. I can't trust you out of my sight. My friends will arrive in a minute and you are not fit to be seen. I am affronted. Now, go straight to your room. And not one sound do I wish to hear. Oh, Cousin Ribby, Henrietta, do come in. Good afternoon to you, Tabitha. Where shall I leave my bonnet? Well, I'll take it, Ribby. Oh, thank you. May I take your cloak, Celia? I expected to be greeted by the kittens, Tabitha. Where are they? Um, oh, uh, I'm afraid they're poorly. Oh? Um, measles. Measles? Y yes, they're in bed with measles. Yes, dear, what a shame. Mmm. <laughs> Such a noise in this house. I think this scene. You did say crashing. they were poorly, didn't you, Tabitha, dear? I'm not coming here. Another again. piece of parking. Yeah, you know, then, um, Henrietta. I shall get one of my headaches. <laughs> As for the puddle ducks, they went into a pond. The clothes all came off directly because there were no buttons. have been looking for them ever since. Mind you, Jemima was no better at finding things than she was at hiding them. She tried to hide her eggs, but they were always found and carried off. You will never hatch your own eggs, Jemima, you silly dog. I wish, nay, intend to hatch my own eggs, Rebecca. But the farmer's wife has forbidden it. And indeed, I have not the patience to sit on a nest for 28 days, and no more have you, Jemima. Huh. You would let them go cold, you know you would. Hmm. I will hatch them all by myself, if I have to make a nest right away from the farm. They will see. They will have to apologize. Not the patience, indeed. Hmm. Now then. Oh, the far wood looks a safe, secluded spot. Lost your way? Oh, uh, no, uh, no, no. On the contrary, quite the contrary. Though it's most civil of you to ask. No, it concerns the nest. <laughs> the nest? Oh, dear lady, where? To be more exact, the nesting place. I am trying to find a really convenient dry nesting place so that I may sit my eggs. <laughs> Is that so indeed? But surely the farmyard... Yes, one would think. 
think that would be the very place. But no. One cannot call one's eggs one's own. That infuriating hen. She truly believes that she's the only one with the patience to hatch a clutch of eggs. Well, really. <laughs> Indeed, how interesting. <laughs> I wish I could meet with that fowl. <laughs> I would teach it to mind its own business. <laughs> But as to the nest, there is no difficulty. I have a sack full of feathers <laughs> in my woodshed. Oh, but oh, too kind. I couldn't put you to the trouble. The inconvenience. Oh, no, my dear madam. You will be in nobody's way. You may sit there as long as you like. This is my summer residence. You would not find my earth, uh, uh, my, 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 my winter house, so convenient by half. for filling at least two quilts. Very comfortable, though. And perfect for making my nest. So warm, so dry. Hmm. Oh, must you go? Surely. No, no, no. I've imposed on your hospitality quite far enough, and already the others will be wondering what's kept me away from the yard so late. But I shall return to lay more eggs tomorrow. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, more eggs. Oh, of course, dear lady. Now I'm certain I couldn't leave the care of my nest in better hands. Absolutely. Oh, nothing I like better than eggs and ducklings. I should be proud to see a fine nestful in my woodshed. Oh, what could be a finer sight? Patience, patience, my friend. Oh, patience. Jemima Puddle Duck came every afternoon. She laid nine eggs in the nest. They were greeny white and very large. The foxy gentleman admired them immensely. He used to turn them over and count them when Jemima was not there. So I shall return tomorrow when I intend to sit my eggs. And I will bring a bag of corn with me so that I need never leave my nest until the eggs are hatched. They might catch gold. Madam, I beg you not to. Trouble yourself with a bag. I will provide oats. But before you commence your tedious sitting, I intend to give you a treat. <gasps> Let us have a dinner party all to ourselves. Oh. oh, what a truly splendid idea. Oh, how kind, how thoughtful. Mm -hmm. May I ask you to bring up some herbs from the farm garden to make a savory omelette. Sage and thyme and mint and two onions. Oh, and some parsley. I will provide lard for the stuffy... Um, lard for the omelette. Sage, thyme, mint, parsley and onions from the kitchen. Yes. Jemima Puddle Duck was a simpleton. She quite unsuspectingly went round nibbling snippets off all the different sorts of herbs that are used for stuffing roast duck. <laughs> what are you doing with those onions? Where do you go every afternoon by yourself, Jemima Puddle Duck? Well, well, they would 
Well, well, they would not allow me to hatch out a brood of my own eggs. That puffed-up, overbearing hen so maligned me gossiping in the farmyard that even my sister-in-law, Rebecca, said that I should not have the patience to sit for 28 days. It's all right for her. She does not care to sit her eggs. Go on. <laughs> So I set off to find a secret place where no one could interfere. And did you? Oh, a wonderfully secluded clearing in the woods. And the gentleman there was so helpful. Gentleman? Oh, yes. Elegant with the most distinguished sandy whiskers and a beautiful bushy tail. And such manners. <laughs> Exactly where is this clearing, and how is the house positioned within it? Kep had no doubt who the sandy-whiskered gentleman was, so made haste to find the two foxhound puppies who were out at walk with the butcher. all the ingredients you required. I've got... Come into the house oh. as soon as you've looked at your eggs. Oh, what, what, oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, oh. Give me the herbs so the omelette be sharp. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> Everything is here. see of that foxy whiskered gentleman. things. Best make our way home to the farmyard, where you belong, my dear. Jemima Puddle Duck was escorted home in tears on account of those eggs. She laid some more in June, and she was permitted to keep them herself, but only four of them hatched. 